Good morning and welcome to the House Minority segment of Live at the Legislature. Joining us for the first time this session is Representative Lauren Matsumoto. She serves as our minority floor leader and serves on the committees on agriculture, consumer protection and commerce, energy and environmental protection and transportation. Rep Matsumoto, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Kyle. Thank you for having me. So we've got a whole session to catch up on. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about your district today. So what are some of the, the important issues facing your district right now? Yeah, I know I haven't been on for a while and there's so much that has happened just in the last few months. And, you know, it truly has been a special privilege to serve my district of Mililani, Schofield, Wheeler, Waialua, all the way to Kaena Point. And, you know, it's been a it's been a difficult year for the community. Some of the important issues facing the district right now include the cleanup and repairs from the recent flooding that we had and the issue of a bridge closure and the continued efforts to keep Kavaiha Pai, also known as uh, Dillingham Airfield, open for general aviation. Uh, that is a lot going on, especially the <laughs> the flooding, and I'm sure you're having a really busy session. But can you just talk a little bit about, uh, we'll start with the, the flooding and the bridge first. Sure. Um, as, as was in the news on March 9th, there was massive flooding on the North Shore due to all the heavy rainfall. And, you know, it was discussed in length at the North Shore Neighborhood Board that a lot of these issues were due in part to the lack of maintenance of the waterways by the city, the state, and private landowners. And my staff and I went down the day after um, with River of Life Mission to provide food and assistance to those as need, in need, as well as those who were helping with the cleanup efforts. And it was just amazing to see how many community volunteers came out to help but there were a lot of justified frustrations from the community. Um, but one of the really positive things that have come out of the situation was a resolution that I collaborated on with my area legislators requesting the city and county to work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to develop a comprehensive plan to regularly drain and clear the streams and the canals in the area, which is vital to make sure this type of destruction doesn't happen again. And unfortunately, part of that destruction was the bridge at Wailua Beach Road was damaged. Um, and now it's been closed to all traffic for repairs. And so my office has been calling the city and county. I know many people have been calling our office to get updates. And so I wanted to let people know that the latest update that I've gotten is that they decided the bridge at Wailua Beach Road will be closed for an estimate of six to nine months due to the damage from the flooding. And so I know this is a really, really big deal for people on the North Shore because now they have to reroute around um, that bridge. And I know Wailua Elementary is right there, but I wanted to also share just a reminder that it's closed to vehicles and to emergency vehicles, but also there have been people who've been walking on it. There are people who've been fishing and the mayor's office put out a request that just nobody go on at the bridge for their safety. And so that's something that's really important. Um, and another thing I just wanted to bring up really quickly is because of all the rerouting of traffic, um, there's been a problem at Thompson Corner and there's been a real issue of safety there. And so I just been talking with Ed Sniffen for the past week and they are going to put in an all way stop at that intersection. And that change just started yesterday. Uh, so that's something that's really encouraging. It's going to help for the safety and the traffic issue. And so the conversion work started yesterday, and it's going to go till Friday, April 23rd, and that's between 8.30 and 3 p.m., weather depending. And so I know it's difficult, but it's the only way around right now, and so it's going to make traffic worse for the next week. But we just ask for continued patience because I know it's going to make a difference in the long run. And if there's any questions please don't hesitate to contact my office at repmatsumoto at capital.hawaii.gov. That, that does sound like it, it's been a lot. And, and you had mentioned that you and your staff had volunteered at the River of Life mission. So how, you know, how has the community response been? Uh, you know, what have you heard from uh, just folks who are dealing with uh, just this adversity right now? You know, the communities really come together. Again, they're frustrated with a lack of assistance necessarily from government, but it's really brought the community together and that's been encouraging. That's excellent. So we'll transition to, I guess, the next very important thing going on in the North Shore is uh, you had mentioned Kavaiha Pai or uh, the Dillingham Airfield. So what, what is some of the work that you've done there? There has been so much. 
So a year ago, we had a town hall about this. And just in this past year, we've made so many great strides because the airfield was set to close on June 30th of last year. Um, it's now set to close June 30th this year. But just in the last few months, we've made so much headway. On February 17th, uh, we gathered at the airfield with elected officials from every level of government, Department of Transportation, the U.S. Army, business owners, community stakeholders. Um, and we had a lot of different people in attendance, like the Lieutenant Governor and Congressman Kai Kahele, as well as the Army Garrison Commander and several members of the DOT. So a lot of those stakeholders um, that were really important. We also heard from Thomas Shirai, who is an ancestral descendant from the area and really brought a lot of his mana'o to the conversation. And it was amazing to see what could come together when people are talking from various backgrounds and working towards a common goal. So are we cautiously optimistic? Are we optimistic that we're going to get there? Uh, what are your thoughts on that so, so far? You know, we've made a lot of progress. I know there are two main issues have come up in every meeting, and that is the antiquated water system and obtaining a long-term lease from the Army because they're the ones who own the land that the airfield is on. So in regards to water, we've created a specific water stakeholder group that has been meeting to talk about the issue of water, and it's become abundantly clear that neither DOT or the Army's main objectives is to be a water management company. And so this group is working to set up a separate management system, a state-sponsored state, -sponsored state um, management system. And so just in this last two weeks, great progress has been made. Um, and also for the long-term lease, um, the Army and DOT, we have a stakeholder group that meets every two weeks. And in our last meeting, the Army agreed to write a letter, and DOT stated that once that letter was received of an assurance of progress towards that long-term lease, that they would remove the current June 30th closure date. And that was something that was such a huge step forward. And I really wanted to take the time quickly to especially thank Ross Higashi, the DOT Airport's Deputy Director, and Colonel Misagoy, the Army Garrison Commander, just for their commitment towards working out a solution that keeps the airfield open while also improving compliance and overall facilities at the airfield, which at the end of the day is what we all want. And so they've been putting in countless hours of meeting just to see this happening. And it's been really encouraging. It's really a gem of the North Shore. That's excellent. And the, uh, our department workers are definitely people who have thankless jobs sometimes. Uh, we got 20 seconds left. Can you just talk about how, uh, just what Kavaiha Pai means to the North Shore community and, and what it's meant to you? over the past few months? You know, I've gotten to learn so much about it and it's a focal point for the community and it's so special. It's the only place in Hawaii where you can fly gliders just because of the, ge the geography of the area. And so it truly is special. It really brings the community together. And I think it's something that we need to make sure that we invest in and keep going for years to come. We will definitely keep our prayers up for uh, for progress on that. Representative Matsumoto, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, to our crew at Olelo, thank you for uh, all the work that you put into this program, and we will see you next week on Live at the Legislature. Aloha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol? So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.